everybody, my name is Eli. My name is Jason. My name is Caden. And my name is Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we know that your time is important. We appreciate your time. We congratulate you for spending this time seeking the word of Yah. And we are a family that is extending our table to your family. And we can all sit around as a giant family as we probably talk about the most important things that are available to talk about and in this crazy world that we're living right now there probably is nothing more important than seeking the will and the ways of our creator and when we seek his will and when we seek his way we change and we align our lives to reflect what is in his ways and when we go astray when we go against the laws statutes and commands of our creator it should give us a bad feeling it should give us what they would probably call guilt and it is something that we would want to change and something we need to change and we will not know what sin is unless what jade uh, unless we know what the Torah is, because the sin is breaking the Torah. How do we know that sin is breaking the Torah, Caden? Because he said the sin is what is defined as the Torah. It's why Yeshua came down for us, why we had sacrifices. He says, when you do against my will, you're going to do a sacrifice because you have broken my Torah, you've transgressed my Torah, and the transgression of the Torah is, def is called sin. What book of the Bible defines what sin is, Eli? First John. Um, oh, there's, that's one. What about... Uh, Literally Genesis. Ge uh, yeah, Genesis. And so, what is the very first transgression of the commandments? The transgression of the commandments was when Adam ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit, which he was told not to. Well, it actually started off with Eve, right? And so, I had a discussion with somebody today about this. And they said it was... Um, I guess it was... Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they framed it, but it was to the point where... He said that Adam was the first one to transgress, but unfortunately, um, it, it was Eve was the first one to transgress. How did she transgress, as Eli? Because the serpent deceived her and told her a lie, partly, and he and she decided to take the fruit and eat the fruit, and then she went and gave it to Adam. And where was Adam at during all this? It never specifies, but I assume he was around. I assume he was either working in the field or doing something of that sort. So how is it that Eve would not know not to transgress this, or how is it that, uh, I guess, how did this all unfold so horribly? Uh, the devil's extremely crafty to start with. Um, she obviously didn't know the command very well. She said something along the lines of, if we touch it, we will die, which was never actually said. Don't, don't touch it or you will die. I'm sure Adam said, like, to stay away from it and Laura will die. I'm sure he was, like, he was scared to death of it, but... She was she was coaxed into it. She was very uh, believing because all the animals smoke uh, spoke in uh, Jasher. The animals didn't smoke. I know. I... Hopefully they don't. Maybe that's why the dinosaurs are dead because they <laughs> did smoke. But I don't think so. <laughs> so all right. So let's let's continue on. And so we have a we have a problem. And the very first problem and the problem is always about obedience. And it is a problem in life. Is a problem with everything. Is a problem with parents and kids. Right? There's a lot of issues. Like, we have a Torah of our house, and a lot of times it gets broken here. And so what happens if you guys break the Torah of our house? Uh, there's punishments. You guys get in trouble, huh? Right. So what happens if we break the Torah of our Creator? Uh, they're uh, the same thing. We would get in trouble by our Creator. We would, Back in the day, you'd have to offer a sacrifice. So we're already cursed. Women are cursed. Men are cursed. Does that mean we should transgress the Torah, or does it matter if it, we transgress the Torah? Because we're already cursed. That's uh, like, yeah, there's more curses. That's like saying uh, you committed a crime, you were let out of your crime until qu your court date, but then you go commit a whole bunch more crimes. It's just going to add up more onto your sentence. All right, so that makes sense. Let's go over some of these because we have not gone over this yet. We added a lot to them last time. And this may make some noise as I'm popping this out. I'm sorry. Okay, commandment number one is what, Eli? Is be fruitful. Jaden, two. Multiply. I guess you know this by heart. Three, Caden. <laughs> Replenish the earth. Eli. Subdue it. Have dominion over it. Jade. Six, Caden. The herb bearing and every, every tree, tree is, is for food. food. I'm totally messing with these guys because I put this up on the stand and then I'm having them try to do this. I've seen if they can remember it. Number seven is man and woman should build their own families. Eight is master sin. 
Nine is every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Ten, don't eat the blood. Eleven, walk before me and be perfect. Twelve, guard Yahuwah's covenant. Thirteen, every male child shall be circumcised at eight days old. Fourteen, teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Uh, Fifteen, remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Now, commandment 16 is what you guys have not seen yet because we had to go over this. And this was all from Exodus 13, right? Yeah, so this is all from Exodus 13. Excuse, is, it, is it 12? Oh, yeah, 12, 3 through 13, sorry. Okay, so we are right here. And so this is commandment 16 is keep the Passover. Inside of keep the Passover, there's a ton of sub-commands and things about keeping the Passover. So the, the commandment overall that we can figure out is keep the Passover. Now, when you keep the Passover, the first one would be that it's the 10th day of this month. They shall take to them every man a lamb. Uh, B, your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. C, uh, you should kill it in the evening. D, take the, uh, shall take of the blood and strike it on two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses. E, uh, they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire, matzah, which is what, Eli? Unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw. Not sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head and his legs. F, let nothing of it remain until morning. Um, and uh, burn, the, whatever, until the morning, you shall burn with fire. So you burn with it, um, eat it all, and what you don't, you burn it. G is, uh, thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, um, and you shall eat it in haste. So if you were all looking at these commandments, there would be a ton here, but these are basically all pertaining to Passover. So I guess if you break Passover, you're going to be breaking a lot of other sub-commands. H is none of you shall go out the door of his house until morning. I is no stranger, eat thereof. J, every man's servant that is bought for money. When you have circumcised him, then shall eat thereof. K, a foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. Uh, L, when one house shall it be eaten, you shall not carry forth out of the flesh abroad of the house. M, neither shall you break a bone thereof, and in all males must be circumcised if you want to keep Passover. So that was a whole bunch of them inside of this. And so I guess if you wanted the correct count, you would be way more than 16. But since these are our subcommands, and I guess if you're going to break keeping the Passover, you'd be breaking a lot of these other ones. So there's a lot of stuff there. I guess at the end of this, we're not going to have exactly the command count because that was that was kind of convoluted there commandment 17 is one of the same ones keep the feast of unleavened bread and the a seven days shall ye eat matzah even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses for whosoever eats kamatz from the first day until the seventh day what is kamatz okay. Leaven bread okay and in the first day there shall be a holy assembly and in the seventh day there shall be a holy assembly to you no manner of work shall be done in them save that which every man must eat and then, did you guys, we got into commandment 18. Um, there is one Torah for the stranger and the Ebrium. What does that mean, Eli? It is the Hebrews. Uh, what, is, what does that mean? There's one Torah. Uh, well, there's one Torah. Everyone follows the same Torah. Yeah, and um, what it says there's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Hebrews. What does that mean, there's one Torah for the stranger? It means this, the Torah that was for us is also for the stranger if they want to be part of Israel. Okay, so that kind of contradicts everything in Christianity because they don't believe, first of all, in a Torah. Um, and the, they believe that the Torah is only for the, the people of the Jews. And so we are actually looking at for commandment 19. And so we are going to blow into, let's see, that was Exodus 13. So we are going to nail Exodus 14 tonight and see if we can find a commandment. Anyone have anything? Uh from, from, from anything from the we've discussed there. A lot of commandments there. Just, yeah. There. I missed 19. There's no 19 on there. Yeah, there is. Uh, I didn't see it. Oh, did I? I did. That's where it is. Okay. I missed 19. That's why you have a good wife. Uh, commandment 19. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. Whatsoever opens a womb among the children of Yashrael, both of man and of beast, it is mine. Now, did you guys figure out anything on that? Uh, what exactly that means? It's just set apart like you... Okay, so I have Jade. He's my firstborn. What do I do with him? Do I shave his head and stick him in a box? What? What? Well, I don't know. It says set apart. Set you apart. What do I do with you? 
Um, if I'm going to preserve you, do I set you on a shelf? I mean, I think what? it was like gift me to Yah or something like that. Gift you like, to Yah. Basically, do he... I put you on an altar? No, I don't think we kill me. Not that kind of gift. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have exactly what it what that means, and I a couple of you guys out there have have said kind of some stuff. I don't know exactly what that would entail, so, but it is a commandment nonetheless. And so I guess if you are a firstborn. Um, you are set apart in, in a different way than, than those who are not the firstborn. So hopefully we will figure out more on that as we get it. But there we are. Now we are looking for commandment 20. And let's continue on. Exodus 14. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe saying, hold on, before we go there, where are we at right here, Caden? Tell me, catch us up to where we are at to Exodus 14. Uh, from just from Exodus, from just, where, where are we at right now? We, we're just jumping in the middle of this for those who are okay. For those that did not, uh, we're not here for the last ones. Basically, we ran through all of Genesis, we've gone all the way down from the 12 tribes of Israel, they've skipped 400 years, and now we got Moses and his people were enslaved. Moses killed the guy, ran off. Yah told him to come back and to basically free his people. They had uh, 10 different plagues. And the final plague was basically he they kill the firstborn of the Egyptians that did not believe in the children of Yashrael that did not do what they wanted. Right. And then they basically escaped. They had their Passover. They had their Feast of Unleavened Bread on the run. Where are they at right now? And now they are headed to the I think they're in Ramses, right? R R Ram uh, are they in Ramses? I they stopped in Ramses. They are on their way to the Red Sea to cross over to so the Mount. So something we do not know about, at okay. least in this book, is that in... Eli, go ahead. In the last chapter, says they again camped in Etham. 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 Okay, and so when they left Ramses, tell me how they left Ramses, Jade. Uh, in a hurry. Besides that, how did they? They left in a um a, a certain way. They didn't go like single an, file. Oh, oh, like oh, an army. Oh yeah, they split up into groups, into like armies or something like. I think probably tribes. Mm, okay. Anyone have any more details? It was like. Uh, 50,000 by 50,000 by 50,000. It was 50s. like groups it was of... by like, 50s, I believe. Yeah, it was like groups of 50s, like, basically as, like, in military fashion. So, all of a sudden, these people who are not military fashion, if you are not in the military, you do not know how to march in military fashion. You don't know how to actually fight in military fashion, but it is a, uh, it's like a platoon. They, they basically left as a, in, in a platoon. So, it was very interesting because the very first army of our creator was a a large army of this and we're talking so regular people yeah regular people and so um they left as an army they left as a military fashion and so that is how our creator prepares us and how he had us leave and i suppose whenever the second exodus is going to come i would imagine it's going to be something similar to that Wherever all of us meet up at, and I know that all of us are scattered across the world. We're way down south. We know a lot of people over in Africa, South Africa, Canada, U.S. I mean, there's people every single place. And so at some point, um, we're going to be in sukkahs. We're going to be traveling. And how that happens, where that happens, what generation that happens, and we do not know. Um, it appears to me that we are probably in the end times, very close to the end times, um, I don't know if we're at the very edge of the end, but when it becomes probably hopeless, beyond hopeless, is when we would see an exodus happen. And when that exodus happens, I would assume at some point we would have some sort of military instruction as well, and we would probably group the same way these guys grouped out. So just things to think about. All right, Exodus 14. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael that they turn and encamp before Paiha Kiroth, between Migal and the sea, over against Baal Zephon, before it, it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Yashrael, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon his, all his host, that the Mitzrayim may know that I am Yahuwah. And they did so. And it was told the king of Mitzram that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Yashrael go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Mitzram and captains over every one of them. And Yahuwah hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Mitzram, and he pursued after the children of Yashrael. And the children of Yashrael went out with a high hand. But the Mitzrayim pursued after them. 
all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea beside pi ha Kiroth before baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Yashrael lifted up their eyes and behold, the Mitzrayim marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Yashrael cried out unto Yahuwah. And they said unto Moshe, because there were no graves in Mitzrayim, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore have you dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Mitzrayim? Is not this the word that we did tell you in Mitzrayim, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Mitzrayim? For it had been better for us to serve the Mitzrayim than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moshe said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the Yeshua of Yahuwah, which he will show to you today. For the Mitzrayim who ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Okay, what does your Bible read? About the uh, deliverance of Yahuwah. Okay, so you deliverance. This is very interesting, this word right here, right? This is not the first time that we have seen this, but there is a word, and it does mean salvation. And it is... You, the name ahead. of the Messiah. Yeah, it's the name of the Messiah. And so that is something very important to see, that the, the, the name of our Messiah, the name Jesus, does not mean salvation. That is, there were no J's in the Hebrew language. And so everything that was J is more like a, a Y. And so it is it is closer to Yahushua or Yeshua, right? And right here it's, it's Yeshua. It's something saved, a deliverance, hence aid, victory, prosperity, deliverance, health. So our creator said he was going to, in fact, Moshe said, look at the salvation of Yahuwah that he will show you today. Verse 14. Yahuwah shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Wherefore cry you unto me? Speak unto the children of Yashrael, that they go forward. But lift up your rod, and stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Yashrael shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of Mitzrayim, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Mitzrayim shall know that I am Yahuwah when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of Elohim, which went before the camp of Yashrael, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Mitzrayim and the camp of Yashrael, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahuwah caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Yashrael went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall upon unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Mitzrayim pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. So anyone want to give me just a quick layout? What, what exactly is happening here? So the Israelites have another sign of basically faithlessness. They have a sign where they're like, what do we do? We're scared. And Moses is like, don't worry. Y'all y'all has a plan for us, right? He didn't bring you out here just to die. He's like, These aren't, this isn't your graveyard. And Yahuwah is like, all right, just put your uh, hand, put your take your rod and put it over the sea and watch it open up. And it opens up and creates a pathway for them. And it's, if you look on a map, it's actually really huge the way the the, the river is. And it's actually like a long, it's actually like a long walk. It's just like a really long walk for that, for that many people to go through. So <clears throat> that's probably why they were freaking out, right? They're like, there's a lot of people here. Not all of us are going to make this in time. So basically, uh, by the time the uh, Mitchrites get there, the water starts closing up and it sucks all of Pharaoh's men in and they all end up dead. Yeah, well, that's not part yet. It hasn't happened yet. But yes, they, so they are going. I, I mean, essentially, what I what I see is a giant wall of water. It has to be huge. Probably, I don't know, uh, twenty feet maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe more. That. Probably, I would it's say deep. 80, 90 feet high at least. Maybe a hundred feet high. I guess it depends on how big it was. But it was a huge, um, a huge, basically river that was split up. And I mean, if you can envision what the sides of that looks like, I mean, it almost. 
imagine like a portal or something like uh, what everybody sees a portal looks like with a little bit of water or something on there. But you, you look at it, it's a, it's a wall of, of almost glass. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure all the kids are like putting their hands in it. Yeah, it's probably freaky. You probably got in there and you probably wanted to get out of there pretty quick. I mean, yeah, you're looking like, each side. You're probably thinking this thing's going to collapse and kill me at any moment. Yep. Okay, and verse 24. Is that where we're at? Nicole? I lost my place. Yeah, we're yes. All right. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, Yahuwah looked unto the host of, Mith- of the Mitzrayim through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Mitzrayim and took off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily so that the Mitzrayim said, let us flee from the face of Yashrael for Yahuwah fights for them against the Mitzrayim. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Stretch out your hand over the sea, and the waters may come up again upon the Mitzrayim, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moshe stretched forth his hand over the sea, and turned, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Mitzrayim fled against it. And Yahuwah overthrew the Mitzrayim in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned to cover the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Yashrael walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus Yahuwah saved Yashrael that day out of the hand of the Mitzrayim, and Yashrael saw the Mitzrayim dead upon the seashore. And Yashrael saw that great work which Yahuwah did upon the, upon the Mitzrayim. And the people feared Yahuwah and believed Yahuwah and his servant Moshe. Okay, so... That is what we are going to conclude with, even though we did not find a commandment. And I'm going to come back over here and go over these just again. Um, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a full list of this. And so when you guys are trying to keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator, just realize there are a lot of things subsets of various things and this is literally what is m1314 14 sub commandments of commandment 16 so we almost doubled our commandments if we are going to keep track of that but i do not believe this is part of the 613 laws of yah they might have this stuff in there they probably have some of it um, but this is where it can not get convoluted but it is stuff that when you guys keep passover this would be the list right here that you should check off that you're doing and a lot of people are like well that was for the old days and things you can't get lambs or you can't get some of that and yeah some of us can't get lambs i mean it's it, the it, these are the end times if you don't have like a, a place you can get lamb you're not going to be able to do this so in the event you can't get a lamb do you guys believe that you should keep passover i would say yes try to do the best you can I agree. Like maybe a cow or something, a cow, maybe beef. I would, well, you know, maybe. that's the funny thing. You remember how the Jews the do Jew, it? Yeah, there was, there was a Jewish rabbi we were talking about. We were, we were trying to get him to leave in Yehoshua. And, this guy was uh, shaking us down yeah, for a he, while. Yeah, he was trying to convert us to Judaism. We were trying to convert him to Yehoshua and get him both, on both things. But he uh, was saying that he would sacrifice a chicken on Passover because he didn't want his neighbors to know what he was doing. Um, did he say he wouldn't want to know he's doing? Yeah, he didn't want it's like a thing where they hate the goyim. Yeah, they don't want the goyim to celebrate with them. Any outsiders. Yeah, and anybody who's outside, and this is the Jewish religion, guys, and you do not want to be a Jew. You want to be a Hebrew. You want to be a Hebrew. Um, you know, if you call yourself a Jew, you're only one of 12 tribes, and it was only the fourth son um, that actually was, was part of that. So that doesn't represent all of us. And the majority of the tribes, the 10 tribes, the 10 Northern tribes, they're all dispersed across the world. And they're not the Jews. You know, if you're looking at people who maybe are the Jews, I mean, that that might be the people of the land today. But if you look at the people of the land today, when I'm talking Israel, these people, I mean, first and foremost, before you go any further than anything else is abortion is legal in Israel. And if you if you were to bleed a baby out in the land with Yah, he's he's gonna smite you. You should be taken outside the city gates and 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 killed. So anyway, that's it. Um, we will conclude this today. Um, again, there's 16. The 17th is to keep the feast of unleavened bread. 18 is there is one Torah for the stranger and the Ebrim, which is is super important. And then 19, sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah, which we will get a little more clarity. And, um, you know, maybe those out there who do know exactly or have other kind of doctrine. And I'm not talking outside doctrine. I'm talking about things that you guys have read in the Bible that where we understand what sanctifying the firstborn is. 
And some of these commands we may not know up until we have a, a, a better leader, um, somebody who actually knows this stuff. So, all right, everybody. Uh, boys, do you guys have anything else? Uh, we, uh, we will be live at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Thursday. For a little bit of a youth group, we'll be going over Proverbs 7. Yep, youth for Yah. And so you have these three boys, Jaden, Caden, and Eli. And they are 100% on their own when they do the youth for Yah. I, uh, mom and dad are completely out of it. We have no, no nothing in this. And so it is completely a youth-driven ministry. And, you know, it is, it is I, I'm very proud of the work and the the love that they are showing and if you guys want to join that we we it's a thursdays we're trying to keep it on every thursday six o'clock our time which i don't know what time that is I your time central standard time so if you guys central standard time or whatever maybe yeah uh, central standard time and i don't know if the world is on central standard time or things of that nature like I, you in in africa i think you guys are like it's definitely uh, not hours yeah, yeah seven, seven hours, eight, ahead. Nine hours ahead of other things so that would only be good central time i think would only be good if you're in the northern side over here West. so anyway um yeah western northern side okay um any, eli do you have anything um read your bibles read your bibles nicole do you have anything prayer requests prayer requests okay. yes if you guys have any kind of prayer requests please drop them into the comments we do pray for those who need prayer and ask for prayer. We have a lot of you guys on there that we've been praying for over the years. And um, if you have prayer requests, we're happy to do that. Uh, if you guys will include all of us in your prayers as well, we are always under attack. We are always under a kind of dangerous world that we are in. And so we are trying to do the best we can. And so we, we would love the prayers of Torah keepers um, simply because Torah keepers are those uh they're they're loved by yah okay um that is it everybody thank you guys very much i hope you guys have a wonderful night shalom, shalom. shalom.